Okay guys, welcome to the Light Reactions video where we are going to take a tour of photosynthesis, specifically the light reactions by zooming into an oak leaf. Before we get any further, I want to show you where the animation can be found and also give credit to the guy that made it for us. So here's your typical oak leaf, very green. You can also see these veins that are in there. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. So we're going to zoom in. There's a cross section of a leaf that you should be familiar with. The very upper layer is called the cuticle. It's actually a waxy layer that prevents water loss. There's lots of water in here inside these leaves, inside these cells. And baking out in the sun can cause some evaporation. Too much evaporation would be bad for the plant. There are two layers of epidermis. There's an upper epidermis and a lower epidermis. This is just like our skin. It's kind of a protective layer for the leaf. The most important parts, at least for photosynthesis, are the inside, and that's called the mesophyll. There's two layers. The top layer is called the palisade mesophyll. You can see they're kind of like column-shaped cells, and they're packed in there pretty tight like sardines. There's a good reason for that evolutionarily. is because these cells are doing most of the photosynthesis. The tighter they're packed in and the longer they are, the more sunlight they're going to be able to capture. Just underneath them is the spongy mesophyll. You can kind of see why it's called spongy mesophyll. There's a lot of space in there. And that space is actually room for gas exchange and gas storage, specifically carbon dioxide and oxygen. Other things you see here, on, especially on the lower epidermis, are these guard cells. Guard cells are pretty much like double doors controlling whether or not there is an opening present at the bottom of the leaf, sometimes at the top. These openings are called stomata, or singular would be stoma. And here are those veins that you typically see. This is the vascular tissue. It consists of two parts, xylem, up here on top in blue. And that's transporting water and minerals throughout the plant. And the bottom part here is called phloem, and that's transporting food. So we're going to zoom into those palisade cells, since that's where a lot of photosynthesis is taking place. Here you see a typical cell, cell wall, nucleus, vacuole, cytoplasm, and most importantly, one of those chloroplasts. So let's take a look at one of those chloroplasts. This is going to remove the outer membrane and inner membrane. We're going to see this dual membrane structure again when we get to the next unit. Here, so you see the outer membrane and inner membrane. There's actually a space in between there called the intermembrane space. We're not going to talk too much about that, but we are going to focus on these guys, thylakoids, which are actually these little flattened uh, pancake-like discs. They're actually uh, somewhat hollow, kind of like sticking two frisbees back to back to give you a better idea of their structure. And you can see they're all kind of stacked up in here, anywhere from a dozen to a hundred of these things per stack, and these stacks are called grana, singular would be granum, and these granum, or these grana, sorry, are connected by these things called stroma lamella, they're basically like connecting bridges, so this is just basically one big network of membrane in here. The space in here is kind of like cytoplasm of a cell, it's actually called stroma, and this is where one of the most important chemical reactions on earth takes place, and that is where these plants are actually making food, making glucose, supplying themselves with food so that they can be the beginning of pretty much all food chains and be uh, supplying life on earth with food. Without these plants we would not exist. So we're going to zoom in to this stack of thylakoids. Before we go any further I just want to point out that all of these thylakoids are surrounded directly by stroma, that kind of watery cytoplasm-like stuff. That's where the dark reactions take place. We'll focus on that in another video. For this video, we're going to focus on the light reactions, and that is taking place on the membranes of all these thylakoids. So here you see that phospholipid bilayer that we've seen before in the nucleus cell membrane. We'll see it again in the mitochondria in the next unit. Here's the outside of one of those thylakoids up here called the stroma, again, just kind of that watery stuff. The inside of a thylakoid is called the lumen, and there would be another membrane down on the bottom there that would wrap around and form the bottom part of this thylakoid, again, kind of like two frisbees stacked together. 
We're going to go through this in five steps. This is really nice animation because it can take you through step by step by clicking on each one of these. And it keeps it all very simple. Simple shapes, nothing really too complicated about it. But does a nice job of showing all the basic parts. So we're going to start with step one over here. This thing, PS2, stands for Photo System 2. You should see this in your notes. This is basically a large protein complex full of pigments, primarily, that are capturing sunlight, which is represented by this little yellow arrow that comes in and zaps this one pigment, molecule P680. Nothing you have to know or remember. These little flashing uh, gray dots represent electrons. You can see they're going up because they're getting energized by sunlight and getting passed on from shape to shape, which are just another series of proteins. Something else you should notice coming in the bottom is a water molecule. Once that water molecule reaches photosystem 2 and gets zapped by light, it's going to release electrons, which is going to cause that water molecule to fall apart. This process is called photolysis, which literally means using light to break. Photo is light, lice is to break. It's splitting water using light. So you can see the result of that would be these two little red dots, hydrogen gas, and the purple is oxygen gas, which is going to hook up with another uh, oxygen, oxygen to become O2. And for us, that's very useful because we need that for our respiratory system. For plants, it's just a waste product. So there's photosystem 2. Photolysis takes place, which is taking electrons from water. You can see these electrons are leaving the system. They're going to go get passed on. And we'll talk about where they go later. But these electrons have to be replaced, and they're replaced by the splitting of water, photolysis. Moving on to step 2, which is the electron transport chain, simplified with an ETC. There are three proteins embedded in the membrane. They're just going to be shown here with simple shapes. We don't need to know the names of them. You can see that electron is going to move down the ETC. That's going to represent the losing of energy. But that energy is not totally lost. It's going to be used to pump protons into the thylakoid from the stroma. You can see these little red protons, hydrogen ions, being passed in. And these are going to be important later for the creation of energy. Step three is that photosystem one. You might be wondering why these are two and one out of order. That's the order that they were discovered in. The second one was actually discovered first. So here comes another photon. It's going to re-energize these electrons. So we're restoring energy to electrons here. This is a very important part for the next step. So photosystem one, re-energizing these electrons or restoring energy to the electrons. And again, those electrons came all the way back here from photolysis, the splitting of water. Why it's one big reason why it's so important that plants have water. There you go. Step four is actually a second electron transport chain, although it's a lot more simplified. It's just one protein here. And you can see coming in is a molecule called NADP plus. It's going to combine with these electrons and a hydrogen again just kind of floating out in the stroma to create NADPH. This is an important molecule for the next part of photosynthesis, the dark reactions or the Calvin cycle taking place right out here in the stroma where these molecules are coming from and going to NADPH is just an electron carrier, just bringing these electrons from the light reactions to the dark reactions. Dark reactions are going to actually be where the glucose is made. You can't make glucose or many other molecules without electrons to form bonds between things. So one important product of the light reactions is NADPH, carrying electrons to the dark reactions, to the Calvin cycle, so that glucose can be made, so that people like you and I can walk through a forest and not worry about getting eaten by a tree because it's making its own food. So step five is where energy gets made by ATP synthase. It's an enzyme, ACE, that makes, synthesizes ATP. So the name of the enzyme pretty much explains what it's doing, and that is typical for enzymes. 
But notice how those protons that got pumped in here during ETC are going to diffuse out ATP synthase. So they're getting pumped in here to create a higher concentration inside so that they can diffuse out through ATP synthase. This goes back to our uh, cell membrane and transport unit a while back. But notice what happens here at ATP synthase. An ADP molecule comes in and a phosphate. It's going to add that phosphate to ADP to make ATP. This is called phosphorylation. It's adding a phosphate to ADP to create ATP, three phosphates. And now that ATP is basically the energy currency of cellular processes. So a very important molecule for, molecule for cells to have. It's the energy molecule for cells to use as they need. So that's step five, the creation of ATP by ATP synthase. This process here of diffusing hydrogens or protons through this enzyme to create ATP is called chemiosmosis. The process of diffusing hydrogens to create energy in the form of ATP. So that's all five steps. I'm going to click on this one right here to watch the whole entire thing. Something to keep in mind is that this is just one location of one thylakoid. There are thousands of thylakoids, uh, dozens of chloroplasts per cell, and thousands of cells just in one leaf. So you can get the idea of the magnitude of how much of this is actually uh, being made and how much of this is actually happening at, at any given time in a plant. And then again, most importantly, two things coming out of the light reactions to power the dark reactions. They're dark reactions for a reason. There's no light energy, so the dark reactions need to get their energy from the light reactions. They're going to get electrons here in NADPH and energy here in ATP. That is what you need to know for the light reactions.